Hello, this is Irv Shapiro, a.k.a. Dr. Vax, and I'm here today with a very interesting meta review. I'm calling this a meta review because I'm going to be comparing the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, and the Ender 5. I only own an Ender 5, so my observations about the 3 and the 3 Pro are going to come from other reviews and from the Creality website. In addition, one of my observations is about geometry. The geometry of the Ender 5 is different than most i3 style, Prusa i3 style printers. In fact, the i3 style was not originated by Prusa, but they're the most uh, famous manufacturer uh, using that style. So we're going to talk about the difference between the Cartesian styles of the i3 and the Ender 5. Okay, hold on, let's get ready to learn something together. Before we get started talking specifically about the Ender printers, let's talk for a moment about printer geometry. All Cartesian printers, printers that use, in essence, a square set of dimensions, work on the same principles. They all have an X, a Y, and a Z axis. And we all remember this from our days in Euclidean geometry. The difference is which components of the printer are used to move each of, across each of these axes. Now let's think about a print. If we think about a print, it is created layer by layer. If there's 200 layers or 300 layers or 400 layers in a print, on the Z axis, the axis going up and down, there are only going to be 200, 300, or 400 movements. However, if we watch our printers and we watch the print head on the X and the Y axis, there are hundreds of movements per layer. So even if you had a 100 layer model and you only had 100 movements on the X, Y axis, by the time you multiply that by 200 layers, you've moved that print head 100 squared times, which is why the orientation of a print makes a difference. If we look at a good quality printer, the movements between the Z axis on a typical Cartesian printer are the most consistent. And layer to layer should be very, very consistent. This is the case on the Prusa printers or on the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro. Because we're only moving the Z axis, the number of times that we have a layer, 200, 300, 400, 500, it is a much more consistent movement. And therefore, if we want the smoothest face, we want to orient our print so that that face is going up and down the Z axis. On the other hand, if we look at the face, this is a Dr. Vax coaster. Instead of making maker coins, I make coasters. If we look at this, this was printed in this orientation flat on the Prusa i3, which is a typical Cartesian printer. And the top surface is not very consistent. You can see all of the individual print heads. On the other hand, the side is very, very consistent. So something to think about. So what is the difference? Well, in the Ender 5, the print bed moves up and down. That means it only moves once per layer. On the Ender 3 and 3 Pro, or on the Prusa printer, the print bed is moving back and forth rapidly. It's moving on the Y axis. And we'll see on a particular layer, it might move many times. Now, why does that matter? Because print pads are heavy. Print pads have a lot of metal versus the hot end as an example on the Ender printers, which are very light because they're Bowden style hot ends. There is no stepper motor on the hot end. They're very light. So from a geometry point of view, the major difference between the Ender 5 and the 3 and the 3 Pro is the geometry. And theoretically, 
it appears to me that would give the Ender 5 an advantage in print quality. Now in the initial prints I've made, they are excellent. They are excellent. And the difference is that whereas on a traditional printer, Cart Cartesian printer, where the print bed's moving back and forth, you want that movement to not affect the quality of your print. So often you will position your prints in a way so that that movement is on fewer surfaces. And so the surfaces that need to be the most consistent. Now you'll see the layer lines, depending on your layer height, but they should be very consistent. You'll position on the Z axis. Okay, let's switch to the screen now and take a look at all of the characteristics of the Ender 3, 3 Pro, and 5, and do a meta review of these printers. Okay, I'm going to shrink down into the corner of your screen. The majority of your screen will be this table that we'll use to talk through the printers. I'll go through this rather quickly. Um, all of this material is available in other reviews on YouTube from third parties, from other parties. It's available on the Creality website. Now, Creality has two websites. They have a USA website that I find doesn't list all their products. I don't know if it's directly associated with them, how it actually works. But if you go to creality3donline.com, the website you see listed in the bottom corner of this page, that has all of their printers. That's where I print, uh, purchased my Ender 5. The Ender 5s appear to be in limited production because I've only found them um, at a couple different locations, including directly from the website in China. I ordered mine from China. It came in less than a week. It was remarkable how good logistics is nowadays. So let's start at the beginning, geometry. On the Ender 5, the print bed moves up and down on the Z axis. We already talked about the importance of that. On the Ender 3 and 3 Plus, the print bread is a traditional print bread moving back and forth rapidly on the Y axis. Now, some people have attempted to call the Ender 4, which is no longer made, and the Ender 5 a Core XY printer. That is not accurate. In a Core XY printer versus a traditional Cartesian geometry, the stepper motors do not move. In this case, the X stepper motor is static, but the Y stepper motor um, is moved back and forth along with the print head. In a Core XY printer, that would not happen. So the primary difference here is it's still a Cartesian XY configuration, but the print bed moves up and down. The second um, difference is the Ender 3 Pro and the Ender 5 have removable print surfaces. Um, if you've never used a printer with a removable print surface, it's remarkable. Now, I do not like this flexible magnetic print surface as much as I like the spring steel print surface on the Prusa. Um, I find that one releases prints better, but this is really dramatically better than a fixed print surface. You do have to make sure that the magnets adhere smoothly and you don't get any bumps in the middle. A build area on the 3 and the 3 Pro are identical. The primary difference with the Ender 5 is the on the Z axis, there's another 50 millimeters of print area. So you can print taller objects on the Ender 5. Um, in fact, this magnetic print bed, I believe, is identical between the Ender 3 Pro and the Ender 5. The speed ratings on the Ender 5 are faster. Um, that really partially has to do with the fact that you're not moving the print head bed as often. Um, it has slightly upgraded, um, a stiffer frame. Now, the difference between the 3 and the 3 Pro is the 3 has the least stick, stiff frame. The 3 Pro is a stiffer frame, but it's an i3 configuration. And the 5 has a full box frame. This is a solid, solid frame. So by, when you crank up the speed, you'll get less vibration. The, you'll, it'll be a stiffer surface, and therefore you can print theoretically faster with less artifacts. So that, on, in terms of speed, the Ender 5 has an advantage. The extruder on the original Ender 3 was a, the first generation Ender extruder. The extruder on the Pro and the 5 are the same. 
It's the new improved MK10 extruder. Um, it is rated as going a bit um, higher, at a bit higher temperature on the 5. So whereas the 3 and the 3 Pro go to 255, on the 5 it says it goes to 260. The primary difference is the bed, um, the heat bed is a different heat bed on the 5 and it can go to a higher temperature, which would be important for certain more exotic uh, fabrics. Also, theoretically, it might be easier to enclose this printer. But if you were to enclose this printer, you have to be careful because the stepper motors are outside of the enclosure, particularly the stepper motor on the Y-axis is a good, oh, I don't know, couple hundred millimeters outside of the structure. So you, if you were to en enclose it, you couldn't bolt your enclosure directly to these um, extrusions. Um, the Pro and the Ender 5 use uh, higher-end Maxwell power supplies. The Ender 3s originally shipped with a generic power supply. I don't know if that's been changed. Somebody in the comments can help me with that. Assembly. The Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro are very IKEA-like. If you can put together an IKEA bookshelf, a simpler IKEA project, you can put those together. I found the Ender 5 a little more complex. There's more metal to assembler, assemble. The electronics were a little harder to plug in. Um, it does have the advantage, though, on the print beds of when you get to the leveling step, the knobs are nice and big. Um, it is very easy to level, even though it's a manual leveling process. Now, which would I select? Well, if you're new to 3D printing, you're not sure you're even going to like it. You just want a printer to get started. I would probably go with the original three. Those are heavily discounted on the web. While it sells for $209 on the Creality website, you probably can get them under $180. If you're looking for value, but you want a removable print bed, which will make your life a lot easier than scraping prints off the bed, you're looking for upgraded power supplies, a little stiffer frame, the 3 Pro is excellent. The next step up basically gets you another 50 millimeters of print height and increased speed. So if you're going to be doing a lot of printing and an extra 10 or 15 minutes on a print makes a difference to you, I have cranked this up to 300, 3x speed from what I sliced the print and the prints came out very good. So I believe there's potential for the 5 to be quite a bit faster and have more print area. So I hope this meta review was helpful. Um, please leave comments. I, I'd be happy to interact with you. I'm interested if anyone has both a 5, a 3, and a 3 Pro to see what your thoughts are. Thank you for joining me at the Dr. Vax YouTube channel. If you like this video, please subscribe, please like the video, and let's continue to learn things. <music>